One of the things that was a lot of fun in the er early 60s that kept us in constant touch with the audience were the record hops. And we did dances virtually every week, all over, all over the area, from, from uh, uh, you know, out in, at Mount Oreb, uh, all the way to Lawrenceburg, Hamilton, uh, Taylor Mill. We did dances at high schools all over the place, and those were just, just fun times. I, I cannot forget, I used to do those dances with one tiny little turntable and two little speakers. The record hops were a very important part of, of being close to the audience and, and, and knowing what they were thinking and being able to relate to the audience. Billy Joe was the greatest guy. Uh, he, he'd come out and do dances for us all the time. He would, he would uh, come out and, and sing with some of the local bands. Uh, he got started at Guys and Dolls uh, over on uh, Route 27, just uh, south of Newport there in Southgate. Joe South, who wrote uh, Down the Boondocks, he and I were friends uh, in Georgia. And uh, he called me one day and he said, I wrote this song called Down the Boondocks. And I thought, what a, what a crazy title, you know. But I flew back to, uh, back to Atlanta and we cut that. And in those days, it was a singles market. So um, we cut four sides, you know, for two records. Um, we cut Boondocks, I Knew You When, and two backsides. And I came back to Cincinnati really not thinking much about it because uh, I cut records before that on smaller labels and, and, which, and records I thought were really good and, and did nothing. And really didn't think much about it. And then about, I remember we cut it in December and then uh, I think March of the next year, Bill Lowry called me and said, I got your deal with Columbia Records. And I'm up to the roof. The first time, I'm telling you, I've made a million records since then. The first time you hear your record on the radio, there's no, no feeling like that. And I was so excited. It was a, it was a hit in Cincinnati right away because I, I lived there, but I had no idea it was going to be a national hit. But just to be a local hit was enough, enough for me. I got a call from, um, from Dick Clark's office, and uh, you know, in those days, that was just the ultimate. Down in the boondocks. Down in the Boondocks was quickly followed by another hit, I Knew You When. There was a Solomon session called I Knew You When, which I really liked a lot. In fact, when they told me Boondocks was going to be the first release, I really was kind of disappointed it wasn't going to be uh, I Knew You When. Four years later, Billy Joe Royal returned to the top of the charts with Cherry Hill Park. And I really didn't like um, Cherry Hill Park that much. I, I learned to like it. <laughs> but at the time, I thought, boy, I really messed up by doing this. Stay with us for a preview of part two of Cincinnati's Rock Legends, tomorrow night at 10 on Star 64.